If you ever wondered how pedals on a pedal harp work, you've come to the right place. My name is Susanna, and I am a harpist and a harp teacher, and on this channel every Friday I share tips and advice on all things harp. Today I will explain how pedals work, why there are only a few of them, why there are so many strings on a pedal harp, and whether it's difficult to coordinate both hands and feet while playing. Before we dive into the technicalities, I just wanted to dispel one common myth about pedal harps. Some people may think that because this type of harp has the highest number of strings, and it also happens to be one of the biggest harps when it comes to the size, then it must be surely the ultimate goal in your progression as a harpist to get to play the pedal harp. This is definitely not true. The type or the size of the harp that you play does not define you as a musician. There are many pieces that you can play on all types of harps, and there is also a lot of repertoire that is specifically written for lever, pedal, or other different types of harps. And usually it's for a good reason, as each of these instruments has its own unique qualities. Another myth that still happens to persist is that you first need to play a lever harp and get really good at this before you can even think about moving on to the big harp. And this is also not quite true. Of course, if you're looking for a harp for a child who's 6 or 7 years old, the pedal harp is likely to be simply too big for them. However, if you're an adult and have the opportunity to do so, you are perfectly fine to start your journey on a pedal harp. In fact, this was actually my case. Even though I couldn't afford to buy a pedal harp at the time when I started, I was lucky enough to be able to use a school harp until several years into my journey with this instrument when I finally managed to get my own harp. So, there's no reason for you to feel that you have to play a pedal harp in order to be a so-called proper harpist. But if you want to play one, there is also no reason for you to spend a set amount of time on a different type of harp first. If you're in a position to be able to get a pedal harp and you find it appealing because of the repertoire or for any other reason, then go for it. And if this is something you'd actually like to do but are not sure how difficult is it really to manage coordinating both hands and feet at the same time, stay with me until the end of this video, while we get to know the mechanics first. When you look at the harp strings and learn how to tell which one is which, you will see that they are organized in groups of sevens. You have the red string for C, then you carry on with D, E, passing by the black or blue F, and continue with G, A, B until the next red C and so on. But these are not all the notes that we can play, and if you have some experience with the piano, you may realize that the notes that I just listed resemble all the white keys. But then we're still left with all the black keys to play, and if you're wondering how do we get to play these notes on the harp, the answer lies in the pedals. Let me use as an example the middle C string, the one right here. When you look at it, at the top of the string, you will see the mechanism, and in fact you will see it next to almost all strings on this harp. This mechanism is connected to the pedal that I'm going to move using my foot. When I plug this string right now, it is going to vibrate on its full length, starting from the metal bridge where it rests right here, going all the way down to the soundboard of the harp. Now, as I will bring the pedal down a notch, you will see the mechanism around the string moving and the pins on that top disc are now touching the string. This means that they have shortened the length of the part that is vibrating. And when I plug this string now, the sound that it makes will be a semitone higher. The shorter a string is, the higher its pitch will be. And now, when I move the pedal again down a notch, you will see the bottom disc moving and the pins are now touching the string, again having shortened it the length that is vibrating. And when I plug this string now, it will sound a semitone higher from the previous setting, so now two semitones higher compared to the original setup where it was vibrating at its full length. If you already play the lever harp, you will be familiar with the lever mechanism, where your left hand moves a lever to shorten by half a tone the string next to that lever. On a pedal harp, that movement is delegated to your foot, through the mechanism hidden in the neck of the harp, heading down through the column, and from there to the base of the harp, and to the pedals. 
Well, on a liver harp, each liver is responsible only for one string. You probably realized already that this solution won't really work here, as there is no way we could fit pedals for all 46 strings here at the base of the harp. As you can see, here on this harp we've got seven pedals, and if you remember how at the beginning of this episode we looked at the strings and compared them to the piano, you may be wondering if there is any relationship between the fact that we've got seven pedals and strings on the harp are being organized in groups of seven. And you're right to be thinking about that, because indeed each of the seven pedals will be responsible for just one of the seven notes that we've got. The three pedals on the left are taken care of by the left foot, the one closest to the middle is the pedal responsible for all the B strings, the one next to it is the C pedal that you saw in action just before, and the third is the D pedal. For the right foot we've got the four remaining notes, and starting from the middle they've, uh, we've got E, F, G and A, and this is the order that will be the same on all pedal harps. Now, if you watch the discs on this harp while I use my foot to move the second pedal from the left, you will see that pins surrounding all of the red strings, the C's, are moving. They are all controlled by this one pedal and they will all move together down by a semitone or two as I move my foot. On this harp I can lower each of the pedals twice, which means that there are three different positions the pedals can be set to. Because I can move each pedal two times, once for each of the two discs that are attached to every string, this harp is called a double action pedal harp. The highest position is the one where the pins are not shortening the strings and their maximum length vibrates. This is the flat position, so for any of the strings where the pedal and its mechanism is not engaged and the pedal rests in its uppermost position, this will mean that this note gets a flat, and therefore with all the pedals up we will have D flat, C flat, B flat, and so on. Then the next step down we have the natural position. So if we move all the seven pedals down a notch, This is where we will have all the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B without any sharps or flats. These are our white keys of the piano. And finally, the lowest pedal setting will take any of the affected strings to sharps. So if we now put our C pedal even lower, all the Cs on our harp will become C sharp. And here's how that will sound. First C flat. C natural and C sharp. Many people wonder how difficult it is to play the pedal harp, as this can all look and feel quite complicated when you think that you not only have to use your both hands managing this many strings, but you also have to have your both feet engaged. Like with everything, this requires some time to get used to and then also some practice time so you can feel more confident. But it's exactly as with everything else on the harp and in life. When you first start, you may not know everything, you may not know that the red strings are C's, the black ones are F and all the other letters that go in between. And you are most likely will start with first getting used to where your middle C is then learning what the notes around this string are and gradually getting used to move further and further away and using more notes and strings as you progress. And that's the same with the pedals. At the beginning you will start with practicing setting your pedals into the key that you need before you start playing, so no need to use your feet and hands at the same time. And at first you will likely learn maybe two to three different keys that are the most popular in the beginner's repertoire, so two to three different ways of setting up your seven pedals. Then you may try playing a piece where you will need to make one or two pedal changes involving just one pedal and one foot, so maybe going once down and once up on the same pedal. And then, as you get more confident and will want to play repertoire which involves more changes, you will be adding more layers to what you know already. After some time, you may even think that pedals are actually quite convenient. You don't need to stop playing your left hand in order to rush for a lever change, and you can move between different keys extremely quickly. Plus, with this type of pedal harp, the double action pedal harp, you get access to all available keys. 
As with every new skill, remember to take one step at a time, give yourself plenty of time to get used to it, and be patient if it doesn't click right away. That's why we all practice after all. As pedal harps tend to be rather expensive, I realize that they are not the kind of instrument everyone can have access to, so if you have any questions about pedals or pedal harps, do let me know in the comments below. One question that I get asked a lot is what kind of shoes do you need to wear to play a pedal harp? So if you want to find out more about that, do check out my other video. I'm going to see you here for a new episode of Coffee Break Harp next Friday, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. I wish you good practice and I look forward to seeing you here very soon. Take care for now. Bye!